Hi, my name is Al-Qaeda Mehmet. I'm a PhD student in Mike Anderson's Memory Control Lab at the University of Cambridge. I'd like to first get started with a quick thought exercise, so please close your eyes. Okay, now try to think back to a sad, upsetting, or stressful personal experience that you've had and revisit that experience. What can you see? Can you feel the emotions, the sadness, the anger, or the grief? Can you see the location where it took place? Can you move time forward to what you did immediately after the incident? How about moving backwards in time to what you were doing before? Okay, now let's open our eyes so we don't dwell on that too much, but that quick exercise probably revealed to you that you can retrieve and often quite easily visualize a negative experience, especially if you're prompted to do so. Now, what if I were to tell you that I cannot do that? In fact, I cannot remember the details of any negative experience, even if I know that it happened by looking at my diary. In other words, I cannot replay the details of negative memories in my head like you had just done. And yet I'm perfectly capable of remembering and re-experiencing many positive experiences in my life in quite extensive detail, such as my graduation or my vacations abroad. So the example of my experience begs the question, why and how? Now intuitively, this selective forgetting process can perhaps be described as a coping mechanism that I have somehow developed to deal with difficult circumstances in life. For example, some of you might still be feeling that negative emotion that was triggered by the thought exercise earlier, whereas others were able to quickly shift their state of mind and to not dwell on the feeling. Well, in my case, I wouldn't generate much negative emotion to begin with because I cannot remember such negative details of events. Now, as a neuroscientist, I'm much more interested in the how to shed more light on the why. So how does my brain, and more importantly those of others, become so good at selectively suppressing consciousness of negative memories? In my research, we will answer this question by characterizing people with a superior ability to forget the unpleasantness of life, whom we will call the super forgetters. Just like how there are super tasters with extraordinarily sensitive taste buds, people with perfect pitch, and those with photographic or eidetic memory, we believe that there are also people who have a superior ability to forget the unpleasant experiences from their lives. Now, the idea that someone can be good at forgetting might seem a little unusual. We are essentially theorizing that forgetting is not merely a failure to remember, but rather it's a human ability with its own distinct mechanisms. And as with any human ability, there can be a wide range of skill. For example, on one end of the spectrum are people with post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, whose ability to suppress unwanted thoughts and, and memories is extremely impaired. So then there must also be people on the other end of the spectrum who have good memory overall, but have a remarkable tendency to forget unpleasant experiences very quickly. So, how do we begin this exciting expedition? But we'll get started first by going on a major search on the internet to identify people who perceive this ability in themselves. And this can be achieved by contacting individuals who score extremely highly on self-report questionnaires that we developed, which are aimed to probe selective forgetting ability. Then we will validate that these individuals do indeed have these superior abilities by going through various rigorous laboratory tests. Then the selected and verified superforgetters will be studied using the technique of precision brain imaging, where we will collect multiple sessions of resting state, task-dependent, and structural functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI. Now, earlier, when you were imagining that negative experience, various regions in your brain were actively involved to reconstruct that memory. And particularly relevant to our research is your hippocampus, amygdala, and your prefrontal cortex. So when I told you to open your eyes and to stop dwelling on that memory, mechanisms of memory control were initiated where your prefrontal cortex modulated that continued retrieval of the memory by suppressing your hippocampal and amygdala activity. So when we scan our super forgetters in the scanner as they try to suppress on what the thoughts and actions, we expect to see a much more robust and above average down regulation of these brain structures than perhaps most of you who are watching. Now, a very good advantage, a key advantage of this precision brain imaging technique is that it allows us to construct these exquisitely tailored brain network maps, which can then help us uncover individual specific features. So to demonstrate, here are brain maps of two different people 
where different um, brain networks are color coded. And you can see from the pointed arrows that different distinct features exist um, in the same brain regions across these two individuals. Another highlight of this is that the hippocampus actually remains unexplored with this cutting edge technique. So we will pioneer this as we try to explore what makes super forgetters truly special. In this way, our research advances the field of cognitive neuroscience in three unique ways. Firstly, we reveal forgetting as a distinct human ability and study its extreme incarnation in the minds of some truly extraordinary people. Secondly, we pioneer the application of precision brain imaging to memory research. And thirdly, we identify lessons from the super forgetters that can help heal those who are struggling with intrusive thoughts and memories, like millions of people who are suffering from PTSD. Whether someone is a veteran returning from war, a victim of violence, or anyone grappling with the grief of personal loss, many of us would welcome the knowledge of how to put the past in the past. And so critically, our research can begin to shed light on the psychological benefits of motivated forgetting. Might the ability to forget make a person happier? In other words, are the super forgetters happier than the general population? To find out, let's embark on this exciting expedition in search of super forgetters. Thank you very much for your attention.